evening or whenever you watch this vlog. So today's vlog is going to be a little different, mostly because I don't want to put out three videos on my channel in a single day. I feel like that would trigger YouTube spam algorithms. But um, the uh, conversation I had earlier got cut off by YouTube. Like, OBS was still streaming it perfectly well. And it got cut off by YouTube. Um, so, the conversation was with a guy named LB Muniz. I think that's her. <sighs> Muniz? I, I, I'm not going to pronounce that properly right now. And uh, basically, it uh, was about whether or not Christians um, can work with the state and whether or not uh, libertarianism, Christianity, and statism are compatible. Um, whether those are compatible with building wealth and a variety of other things. Uh, I think it was a relatively productive conversation, and he says he agrees, so I'm glad that I hit record on the last part of the episode, because as soon as the stream cut off, he was starting to talk about something rather interesting. So I figure that instead of releasing three videos in a very short period of time, which would get YouTube to yell at me, I will instead... Um, release it all as one vlog today, uh, and this will be the uh, last end of the the content. If you want to watch the full stream, it will be over there. No, this was not intentionally like that. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you want to catch these sorts of things on a more regular basis, feel free to subscribe and hit bell, etc. Either way. Um, the conversation uh, started uh, about, I think, like an hour and 45 minutes before this cutout happened, something like that. Uh, here is the final portion of it. Um, enjoy and smash the state. So the Book of Eli. Um, so, I mean, it was a movie starring Denzel Washington, you know, the, and, and the villain, you know, and he's carrying a book across the country. It's in this post-apocalyptic post world, but... I think it's, gosh, I don't even want to say the name because I'm going to get the actor's name wrong because I got because the first time I talked about this, I called Denzel Washington Samuel L. Jackson. Why? I have no idea because I had, my brain had to say something and it said the wrong thing because I'm horrible with names. Anyway, um, the the villain, the villain of the, the villain who runs the town, um, he wants the Bible and he's searching for the Bible. Why? Because the words give him power. Right. Right. And he wants to use that power to control other people. So I give this warning freely to anyone who would anyone who would bother to listen. There's power in the word of God, so be careful with people who use it. To you know, so be careful with people who use it. Make sure you're put because our faith is something as real as our instinct, as real as our reason. And so you have to be and so you have to be careful where that faith is going. You gotta test as the a, spirits. Right. As and you shall know them by their fruits. What I will follow that up with is saying, I do think and I, I mean, personally, I find some of this, I find it, I find some of it's very interesting. You know, you mentioned Rothbard. I don't see any, there's no issue with saying we're not where we want to be in terms of libertarianism, which is the label I'm comfortable with. Um, there's not, there's nothing wrong with saying that we're not where we want to be in terms of libertarianism and it's, and seeing if there's anything we can do better to bring the ideas to more people to realize on a grander scale. That is how I view, that is the lens in which I view people like Matt, people like um, Popular Liberty, people like Adam Patrick, who I just had on my show where we talked about this idea of post-libertarianism, Pete Quinones, um, you know, there's a few, uh, uh, Buck Rebel, a few other guys that are kind of, that are kind of just, they're playing with this right now. They're playing with this idea. And I think it's, I, I think it's interesting and I think it's an avenue worth exploring. What it also means is it's not going to be polished. So you kind of have to forget. Sometimes we have to forget the form and look for the substance of something um, to see if there's to see what kernels we can extract from that. Uh, so that that's like the you know if I could speak in layers, you know <laughs> that would be what I'd say kind of in in summation to this whole thing, which is, it, it, you know I, I don't see anything I don't see anything necessarily wrong with that at this moment. It could be that it turns into something horrible, but 
Well, I think that's exactly what it starts to do, because in terms of the Bible specifically, like, again, if you had just said this is my personal opinion, I'm an atheist and I don't follow Christianity, that would be different. But he's saying he's king pill while ignoring what the king says. So that's annoying to me, to say the least. So, like, ultimately, when it comes down to it, that's my primary beef here. So, I, I don't like the fact that somebody is filtering their personal opinions through, like, essentially what I, what I perceive to be a misinterpretation of the words of others. I, I, don't, sure. like, I don't like uh, the, the Bible use. I don't like the fact that he seemingly, like, and this is something I did notice, that he's parroting Yarvin a lot. Like, if, if you're going to have Yarvin on your podcast, just have Yarvin on your podcast. Getting it from the source would be better. And, like, a lot of the people who have had him on have had Yarvin on, so I don't know why they wouldn't just do that. I don't know why they wouldn't just cut to the chase, other than to have fresh blood saying the same thing that already confirmed what they thought. And that's annoying. It's annoying when somebody, like, flexes their own confirmation bias um, and treats it as new content, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. You know, but what I would what I would say in response is this is why exact this is exactly why everybody should subscribe at binawake.com, and uh, you know because I'll help you navigate all this stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. I I kind of view this like I said is it, it, we're in the content creation game, and and you know we're all trying to win to a certain extent. So uh, forget I try to take the substance of what somebody says, and I think you made I think you made some good points in this conversation. I think if you were, I don't know. I mean, I've never spoken with Matt. But, you know, I'm not sure that I, I would I think he would say that he would take, you know, the distinction of financial stability and wealth. He would take those as distinctions without differences and yeah, well, ancillary, there is a and ancillary to his point. But, you know, I'm not here to defend him per se. I'm here to have an interesting conversation, which I think we've managed to accomplish. Right. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, other than beenawake.com, is there any other place you want uh, people to go? If you go to binawake.com and subscribe with your email address, you will get a lot of great content from me. If you want to find me on social media, you can go on Twitter. I'm at the LB Muniz, M-U-N-I-Z. Uh, but binawake.com will get you will get you everywhere. So, awesome. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Muniz, I think this was a productive conversation, if not rocky at points. Uh, I, you know, I think I think maybe having like a more philosophically grounded conversation is important uh rather than like talking about what somebody said because i think like I, I follow ideas not people it's one of the reasons it's very easy for me to disregard somebody as uh, like somebody's ideas because they come from another person they're a rothbardian or a marxist or a hoppian or a yarvanite mm -hmm. you know like sure. so I, I think it's much more important to get down to what the ideas are and whether or not they're compatible, um, than to say that somebody else said them, so this is how we should think. So if that makes sense, then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we could have a more productive conversation than just relaying other people's words. Um, although, like, I did do that with the words of Jesus, but, like, I think that's kind of important if somebody's claiming to be king built. Yeah, fair enough, man. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, uh, so for the, for, the, for the purposes of that, uh, which uh, social network should people reach out to you if they have questions? Twitter? Um, yeah, twi I mean, Twitter. Twitter's the way where I'm most active. Uh, you can also contact me through the Substack as well. So, yeah, people, I mean, yeah, I do like questions. So if people want to try and interact with me, if I came off as a total douche, feel oh, free to take me on. Um, but I will say I don't, I don't engage too much on Twitter, so come in good faith and we'll have a great conversation. Come as an asshole and, you know, it won't go well. I think you were fine. I, I, I like, personally, I think this, this was relatively productive. Um, awesome. I'm glad you think so. I think so as well. Which is good because it's right before Chili Dog Wednesday, so now I'm about to go have my celebratory Chili Dogs. There you go. Sounds great. All right, well, be well. I hope you have a good day, and to all of you out there, smash the state. Hell yeah. One more thing. This is brought to you by Liberty Sentries, at Liberty Sentries, at Twitter. 
Liberty Century strives to bring you interesting, liberty-minded content to your fingertips. They cover a wide variety of subjects from philosophy to politics, science, and much more. Check them out at Liberty Centuries on Twitter and on their Liberty Centuries Medium page. They sponsor this content, so feel free to check them out and let them know I sent you. Be well, all.